Welcome back to the LAC3 video training series. In this video, users will learn how to draw a new venue from scratch in the Venue tab. This video tutorial uses the suspended array mode, but the concepts learned here generally apply to the other modes as well. Once a new project is created, the software defaults to the Venue tab, which will be highlighted in orange to indicate being the active mode. The largest portion of the application window is the workspace, and it is where the venue will be drawn. Every new file has a default listening plane labeled as plane 1. This plane is automatically generated and can be deleted or reconfigured to suit the needs of the design. The workspace is divided into a grid by vertical and horizontal grid lines. Because LAC venues are drawn as a two-dimensional slice of a three-dimensional space, these lines represent the X and Z axis of the venue being drawn. LAC is set to metric measurement units by default, and as such, the default grid printed around the workspace is in meters. LAC can be changed to operate in imperial measurement units by clicking the menu at the top left-hand corner of the screen, clicking Application Options, and checking Imperial under Measurement Units. Once applied, the workspace units will change to feet. The workspace can be zoomed in and out by scrolling, or manually adjusted using the zoom slider here. Tapping the spacebar or clicking the Zoom to Extents button recenters the design within the workspace. Each plane within the workspace is listed on the left-hand side of the venue window. The number and color listed on the left-hand side of the plane corresponds to the number and color of the plane in the workspace. In LAC, each plane is drawn between a front and a rear point. Both of these points have an X and a Z value. Each plane has four listed dimensions, two for each point, each representing a distance from the origin. Any one of these points can be changed by clicking it and typing a new value. Tapping the Tab key moves to the next value, and pressing Enter completes the changes. Real-world venue dimensions are often obtained using a rangefinder. These devices provide their users with dimensions relative to a defined point in the venue. Rather than being an X and Z dimension, rangefinders provide a straight-line distance from the reference point and an angle relative to the horizon. LAC venue geometry can be defined using distance versus angle methodology by clicking this button here. Once engaged, the two points of each plane are represented as a distance and an angle. The reference point of the rangefinder is displayed in the workspace and can be adjusted here using the X and Z coordinates. LAC can be switched from X and Z to distance versus angle mode whenever required by toggling the button. Planes can also be manually arranged within the workspace. Clicking and dragging any endpoint allows adjustment of that point, and clicking and dragging from a plane's center point allows the entire plane to be moved around. Planes can be locked to prevent click and drag behavior by checking the Lock Planes option above. Clicking the plus tab here will create a new plane. By default, the new plane will begin at the rear of the plane listed above it. Clicking on any plane allows for the plane's properties to be adjusted. Here, users can select from a few default colors or expand the entire color palette for a deeper level of customization. The plane type control is used to define the plane's intended purpose. Listening planes represent audience areas and are considered a space that is supposed to be covered by the audio system. The software will attempt to equally space full-range speaker impact points along these planes and will consider these spaces in various acoustic calculations. For all listening planes, a listening height is specified. While the plane itself is meant to be representative of the physical floor of a listening area, the listening height of each plane is shown as a dashed line and is meant to represent where the listener's ear will be in relation to the floor. As such, two options exist, seated or standing. Selecting either will adjust the dashed line above the listening plane to a predefined offset that can be adjusted within the application options. Virtual planes can be used as a geometric reference within a design. 
a virtual plane is acoustically invisible within the venue. Speaker impact points pass right through virtual planes, and they are transparent to acoustic energy. Virtual planes are visual markers only and displayed as dashed lines. The third plane type, architectural planes, are also not considered a listening space. However, these planes do acoustically block the audio system. Architectural planes are used to represent physical walls or balcony overhangs within a venue and are displayed as solid lines. In this example, plane 1 will be shifted to a seated plane and its coordinates updated. Then, plane 2 will be shifted to represent a balcony listening area. A third plane can be added, set to architectural, colored yellow, and coordinates adjusted to represent the balcony overhang. With the venue design complete, the file can be saved from the menu. And if needed, venue geometry can be exported from here and imported into a new design. This is a useful tool for sharing venue geometry between multiple designs in the same space. Following the software progression, in the next video, mapping a suspended full range or subwoofer array will be covered.